Mako! This coaster uses trim brakes to deliver. Wonderful airtime for a B&M hyper coaster. Between its size and the sustained airtime over the hills, this is a clear candidate to be a top roller coaster for me. It does seem to lack something. I'm not sure what it is, but just something. So find out just how good I think Mako is in this review. After adding two other B&M coasters in Kraken and Manta, SeaWorld Orlando looked to make a big splash by adding a 200-foot B&M hyper coaster in 2016. For fans of all types of B&M coasters, this made SeaWorld Orlando's lineup very solid while also offering the incredible airtime that these B&M hyper coasters are known for. As one of the newer B&M hyper coasters, Mako Shoko seems really to understand how to take the larger hills at the right speed to get the perfect amount of airtime. Unlike, say, Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. Named after the Mako Shoko and with the Shark Encounter exhibit next door, this coaster takes on the trend of having SeaWorld coasters loosely themed to exhibits or animal attraction. The station theming is nice, but besides for a lake and the small bit over the walkway, there is basically no theming along the main course of the coaster, which again is standard with most SeaWorld coasters. Dispatches on this coaster are super fast, with the easy to check B&M clamshell restraints. Most of the time, one train was well onto the chain lift before the other one even hit the final brake run. These are not my favorite restraints for airtime, but the fast dispatches and high capacity of B&M trains makes it likely that there will be not much of a line or wait for this ride, even on the busier days in the park. For a star attraction like Mako, I'll take the efficiency of the clamshells over a more freeing restraint. At least, on my visits, the clamshells were allowed to be left slightly loose if you lower them yourself. Though the difference in airtime between a little bit of extra room isn't super noticeable. Just make sure you're not completely wedged in with the restraint, unless of course you're scared, then go for it. You immediately enter the lift hill and then travel up 200 feet from Mako's first drop. This drop, despite its size, isn't too great. One of the downfalls of B&M Hyper Coaster. After getting many re-rides on this coaster, I even completely forgot that there was a first drop after the lift hill on one of my rides. The surprise of this drop actually being there still didn't give me much of a drop feeling though. Then you enter Mako larger elements. The first is a turn to the left that doesn't offer much in terms of airtime or laterals, but helps to accent your speed as a roller coaster element. Then you enter the first of two beautiful airtime hills. Each has trim brakes that slow the train down to the perfect speed so that you'll get nice floater airtime throughout the whole hill. In what seems like five seconds of glorious airtime. This is followed by an overbank turnaround, which plunges you into the second of the beautiful airtime hills. The third airtime hill curves abruptly on the descent, which does kill a little bit of the floater airtime, but offers a much more enjoyable turnaround than the previous two. There's another small airtime hill, which again offers decent floater airtime before entering the mid-course brake run that will slow your train. Then you enter a slower section of the ride. The drop off the mid course is okay and better than some B&M coasters, but nothing special. Then you go over an airtime hill that offers not too much of anything because of your speed. 
This is followed by an overbank that does give a nice feeling of sideways laterals, especially because of how slow you take the turn. Then you have a few twists and turns accompanied by a soundtrack as you sail over the picturesque walkway that is out in front of Mako. These turns are heavier on the positive G's, which isn't really what I want, as positive G's, especially for no reason I can think of, tend to really mess with my head in equilibrium at times. With the speed you take these turns, it's okay twisting around, but essentially it's just a dressed up brake run. The beginning of this coaster is great but I feel like the first two turns are only okay and could offer more solid roller coaster elements, especially if they had similar airtime to that third turn. The finale is a nice visual with some decent twists and banking, but I'm missing a series of small bunny hills that you would find on other similar coasters like the Steel Eel at SeaWorld San Antonio or Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia. If Mako improved these two elements while upgrading the feel and force of its first drop, it could very well be not just a great roller coaster, but truly one of the best ever built. Overall, how good is Mako? Since I prefer strong floater airtime to strong injector airtime, I do rank Mako above Busch Gardens Iron Guazi just to show how strongly I love this coaster. And I place it above the Iron Rattler, which I enjoy, but I also feel could just be better. Mako rests right above Six Flags Over Georgia's Goliath as a truly special airtime machine. But Mako is one that delivers on the large hills instead of just the bunny hills towards the end. Currently, as of early 2023, I have Mako tied for first place in my coaster rankings with the Steel Eel until I get a chance to re-ride the Steel Eel and be reminded of just how the airtime compares. What are your thoughts on Mako? Is this one of the best roller coasters in the world? What do you think its flaws are? Let me know. And as always, cup crap.